the world of solo leveling is absolutely amazing, where there are monsters, dungeons, hunters, and there is a lot of chaos going on between all of them. In such a situation, one question that must be coming in the mind of all of us is that brother, who is the strongest hunter in the world of solo leveling? Well, I am in your mind. I can answer this question, but before that, a very big spoiler alert. Because brother, there are going to be a lot of spoilers regarding solo leveling in this video. Okay, I have given the warning. So in the world of solo leveling, hunters are ranked on the basis of their power. And this ranking is quite clearly defined. For example, if someone is an E-level hunter, then he will be a very weak hunter. Whereas if someone is an S-level hunter, then he will be very strong. But do you know that there is a rank higher than the S rank? Yes, we call them national level hunters. And there are only five people in the whole world who have been given the status of official national level hunter. So how did all this happen? Well, the story begins eight years ago when the world's first S-level gate was opened in America. There were terrible monsters inside this S-rank gate, but the father of them all was Kamish, the boss of this S-rank gate. Now, people who watch my videos regularly, they will remember that Kamish, yes, the same servant of their strongest monarch, Antares, who was captured by the rulers during the fight, and now the Essence Stone has been planted on him so that he can come through these gates and attack the humans. I had covered all this in this video. Well, Kamish had killed many S-rank hunters from all over the world, and he kept killing everyone. Literally. I am not kidding. Kashim had single-handedly killed all the S-rank hunters. Humanity had never faced a calamity as great as Kamish before. It seemed like Kamish would single-handedly wipe out all S-rank hunters. But then five S-rank hunters emerged and fought together, ultimately defeating Kamish. As a result, these five S-rank hunters were granted national-level recognition because, when compared their power level, levels far exceeded those of typical S-rank hunters, making it unfair to place them solely within the S-rank category. It is said that a national level hunter can single-handedly handle the entire country's military. Apart from this, a national level hunter at some point would have single-handedly defeated an S-rank gate. This is the reason why national level hunters live like kings in their country. I mean, they are so powerful that no one can ignore their words. So of course they have money, influence, etc. Now, you must have understood that there is a lot of difference between an S-rank hunter and a national level hunter. The literal gap is so much. Now, after knowing this, it is only fair that I will tell you about the five national level hunters. If I talk about hunters, then at the fifth place, there is a hunter whose name has not been told to us. I am not kidding. No information about him has been given to us in the manhwa. Yes, we just know a little that he is a healer. The national level hunter at number four is from India, and his name is Siddharth Bachchan. Now we have not been told anything about Siddharth, nor have we been able to see him. But yes, he has been mentioned two, three times in the discussion through Manwa. By the way, one thing is known about Siddharth's powers that he has ruler's authority, means he can move anything with the help of telekinesis. And also every national level hunter has spiritual body manifestation. Well, some sources say that Siddharth is an assassin type hunter, but I am not sure about it. So do some research of your own and tell me in the comments if it is right or not. Well, amidst these things, I forgot to tell you this, how the national level hunters have become so powerful. Well, the thing is that all the national level hunters are the vessel of some rulers, so now understand why they have so much power. Now, if you want to know who the rulers are, you can watch my this video, where I explain the entire history of solo leveling, including who the rulers and monarchs are, and how humans fit into the picture. Let's move on to the third number. The hunter there is named Christopher Reed. Chris is also an American hunter who is very powerful and is also known as Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf because he prefers to be alone in solitude and he does not shy away from fighting. In the Manhwa, Norma had warned Chris that some entities were planning to kill him. Upon hearing this, Chris became extremely angry thinking, who can kill me? I am a national level hunter, but perhaps Chris didn't know that it wasn't a hunter or a demon coming for him, but three monarchs instead. Now facing the three monarchs, Chris couldn't fare well. Although he fought valiantly engaged in psychic combat, Combat, manifested his spiritual body, but couldn't emerge victorious, and was defeated. Now, if we talk about Chris's powers, they are the same ruler's authority, spiritual body manifestation. In fact, we could also see his spiritual body manifestation power. He is a one-eyed giant who has hair like flame in light orange color. In this form, Chris creates such a dangerous fire that it will take 14 hunters of ES level to extinguish it. Again, I'm saying that you can see the power difference in both S-rank and national rank. I am saying this again
again and again, because I am proving my point. You people might be thinking that he lost to the three monarchs, so he is not powerful. No, he is very powerful. He is much more powerful than the S rank. But the three monarchs are very powerful. Only our shadow monarch can stand in front of them. Now, let's move ahead. The second number is Liu Gang, who is from China. And of course, he will definitely be the strongest hunter of China. You all must have understood that he is national level. This much seems to be common sense, so he will definitely be the strongest. Now in Manhua, Leo's screen time is fine. And from this, we come to know that Leo is a bit rude. He shows respect to powerful people. And we understood this only when Leo openly admitted to the media that Jin Wu is more powerful than him. If we talk about powers, Leo has amazing speed, strength, durable. Apart from spiritual body manifestation and rules authority, we were also able to see him using energy blast, where he swings his sword, which emits an energy blast and anyone caught in its range is dead. He is so strong that he had killed a lot of ants, the same ants who were running away towards China after the Jeju Island raid. Overall, Brother Lee is quite OP. He has a lot of strength. Now sitting at the very top, we have our own Thomas Andre. Andre is America's top hunter and arguably the strongest hunter. Thomas was born in a poor European family where he had to fight with others to survive, and thus his fighting instincts and abilities were very high. Literally, Thomas developed he became strong, like a tank. He is very wide in appearance, and brother, no one could stand in front of him in the fight. When the process of reawakening started on the earth, then Thomas also became his hunter, and only a few in time, he reached the very top. It is said that during the fight with Kamish, Thomas grabbed his sharpest fang. After Kamish's death, his fangs were given to Thomas as souvenirs, and Thomas made blades out of those fangs. Yes, you can also call them daggers, because the fangs were not long enough to make a sword out of them. Now, at a point in Manhua, Thomas and Jin Wu had a fight with each other. In this fight, my Jin Wu beat Thomas like a dog. I mean, he beat Thomas so badly that I felt like Thomas is dead. But Jin Wu left Thomas alone, and with time Thomas healed. And now Jin Wu and Thomas have become buddies. By this, you can guess how strong Jin Wu is going to be. He had defeated the strongest national level hunter with bare hand. Now, if we talk about powers, Thomas has speed, strength, durability, spiritual body manifestation, rules authority. He has all these things, and also he has reinforcement where he takes his body as a golden armor, looks like a kind of ruler. In this form, his horns come and brother. His attack and defense are next level. Well, Jin Wu goes to the next level with his bare hand. When Thomas was being punched continuously in this form, Jin Wu's hand was also injured, so you can understand that Jin Wu is injured. It means that the guy has power. Apart from this, Thomas also uses capture where he telekinetically pulls anyone towards himself. When he uses capture in the reinforced form, it becomes a situation like a black hole, where he pulls everything inside himself. In fact, Jin Wu would also get pulled inside it if Jin Wu didn't have his strong rules authority, and then Thomas also has collapse, which is like Hulk smash, meaning he will break the ground with his punch, and anyone caught in his blast radius, he will get hurt very hard. Okay, so here I have told you about five national level hunters. Along with this, I have also made it clear that our Jin Wu is much stronger than these five. But there is still one more person left who has not been given the tag of national level officially, but he is no less than a national level. The name of this person is Sung Huan Wu, who is Jin Wu's father. So the story goes that Huan used to be a firefighter, and when the reawakening series began, Huan also became a hunter. Gradually, Huan became so powerful that he became Korea's first S-rank hunter. The concept of being a hunter was so new that there was no proper ranking system. But unofficially, it is said that he was the first S-rank hunter. During a raid, he got trapped in a dungeon, and everyone thought that Huan had been killed inside it. But Huan was alive. He was hungry and thirsty about to die. But then he received the blessing of the rulers. I mean, Huan also became a vessel of the rulers, whose aim was to kill the Shadow Monarch. And when Jin Wu gained the power of the Shadow Monarch, Huan also returned turned to Earth. But then he realized that his son had become the Shadow Monarch. And yes, when Huan came back to Earth, he fought against an S-rank hunter, and he easily defeated that S-rank hunter. So we can say that yes, this guy is also on par with national level hunters. After this, many twists and turns happen in the story. We'll discuss them some other time. But ultimately during the battle, when the three monarchs were fighting Jin Wu, Huan also sided with his son. Although in this battle, Huan, who is Jin Wu's father, couldn't survive. 
alive. So yes, we can say that Huan was also a national level hunter. Although he was never officially recognized, just like Jin Wu wasn't officially recognized, even though everyone knew Jin Wu was the strongest. Now, when it comes to powers, the same powers can be repeated many times. But Huan also had a unique stealth ability. Talking about stealth Huan could conceal his presence well and sneak in for attacks. Along with this, we have already talked about all the national level hunters, which were five. One unofficial, that is six, and Jin Wu is the most powerful among them, means seven. So you can consider these seven as the strongest hunters. So now, if someone asks you, who are the seven strongest hunters of solo leveling, then you should count the names of these seven. So video ends here. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. Also, if you are new to our channel, then subscribe to the channel. Peace out.